Hi everyone. This video is about Canco lofts. It's called From Factory to Luxury Housing. In Jersey City, yesterday's factories have become today's luxury housing. Factories that once provided jobs that were the bedrock of working and middle class families are now homes for the affluent. Beginning in the 1970s, factory owners, in search of cheaper labor and higher profits, moved their operations down south or overseas. In the 1980s, Jersey City began to look for other ways to grow its economy. Using tax breaks and other incentives, it enticed Wall Street firms and luxury housing developers to its waterfront. Corporate and luxury housing towers began to replace rail yards, warehouses, and factories that formed the basis of the city's manufacturing economy. In more recent years, factories have been converted into luxury housing all over the city. Canco Lofts near Journal Square is an example of this continuing trend. What was once the American Can Company, with 3,000 workers making milk cartons, aerosol cans, and glass bottles, today houses condominiums. The first phase of this transformation from factory to condo lofts began in 2007. Canco Lofts is an example of how Jersey City, like so many other cities in recent decades, has turned to high-end real estate development as key to its economic growth. A building whose original purpose was to make things has been repurposed as luxury condos for buyers who can afford them. Canco Lofts is also an example of factory nostalgia, the celebration and idealization of the history and architecture of factories used to market them as appealing living spaces. This romantic view of the past begins with associating the name of the building with its earlier purpose. Thus, we have can and canco to recall its past. Factory nostalgia includes an industrial aesthetic which can be traced to the artists who first began living in factories. This aesthetic is rooted in an appreciation for the architectural features of the factory. Canco incorporated this aesthetic in marketing its loft by highlighting the building's Art Deco facade along with its 10-foot windows and 14-foot ceilings, as well as its landmark status. This was key to reinventing a factory as housing. Art has also been central to marketing the building to appeal to upscale buyers. For example, when the building opened in 2007, a sculpture consisting of paint cans hung on the wall of the lobby recalling the building's past. There have been displays of artwork by local artists in the lobby, which also has electronic screens and artistic photographic displays. Next door to Canco Lofts is Parlay Studios, a photography and media production company that provides galleries, studios, and support services for various art projects. Nearby is Mana Contemporary, a major art gallery that opened in 2011. It too is a repurposed factory. Supporting the arts is an important part of the city's redevelopment strategy. It has designated the area around Canco Lofts as an arts district to encourage the growth of the arts there. This helps create the image of a hip, trendy neighborhood attracting professionals, which assist developers in marketing their properties. It also promotes a consumer culture of restaurants, entertainment, and tourism, which are key parts of today's urban economy. In 2006, Canco's developer requested and received a 30-year tax abatement from the city to help finance the redevelopment of the property. In return, he committed to contributing $1,500 for each unit he built to the city's affordable housing trust fund. While the city council had some concerns about the amount and the length of the tax abatement, which is essentially a tax break, it voted to approve it after the developer agreed to contribute $185,000 to five nonprofit organizations located in various council members' wards. Two years later, in 2008, feeling squeezed in a depressed real estate market, the owner of Canco Lofts turned to the city for relief. He said only 60 of the 202 condos were sold and he could not lower the price for the unsold condos and still make a profit. He asked the city council to reduce the tax rate he received with his tax abatement two years earlier, which they did. 
Some residents were critical of this decision. One resident said, the public is being asked to subsidize them, referring to the developers. Who subsidizes me? If someone wants a guaranteed profit, that is not my job as taxpayer. Tax abatements to build luxury housing continue to be hotly debated today as working and middle-class families in the city struggle to find housing they can afford. In 2010, the developer of Canco Lofts obtained pro- approval from the city to add more housing units to a property he was developing nearby in exchange for creating a pocket park across the street from Canco Lofts. The city rezoned the property, which allowed the developer to add two more floors to the building. This has become a common practice in many cities in which public goods such as parks, playgrounds, schools, affordable housing, and other amenities are being created by developers in exchange for lucrative variances and tax breaks. At the same time, it raises questions about the role and responsibility of the government to produce these public goods, as well as what is gained and lost in these exchanges. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So long.